Hi, and welcome to Elevate Your Wellbeing Contagious Care, session number 58 on this very first beautiful winter's day in June. Our first day of winter, and what a great topic that we're gonna look at today with my dear colleague and friend, Debbie Hannon. Welcome to you, Debbie. It's lovely to have you here. Thank you, Heather, for this lovely invitation and brilliant work and congratulations what you're doing as well. Thank you, that's very sweet. Thank you, it's a wonderful community we've got out there. And um, it's, I'm feeling very blessed by the whole community, have for this whole yes. year. Well, now it's been about 15 months since, since mm. COVID, since we first started, I think. So welcome, Annie. Please uh, let us know if you're watching. It's always really encouraging to know who we're speaking to. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that's right, give a wave. You know how to give a wave through the comments section if you want to say something or just click that wave button or the love button. And uh, it's, it's just great to have Debbie here today and you as well uh, out there listening and watching. Today's topic, detoxing the mind. It is a very hidden conversation, hey Debbie? It sure is. It's an unspoken conversation. Yeah. Uh, and I can understand why when like gut health is just so important mm. but because it's about our bowel people mm. just do not want to go there they don't it's a very <laughs> private issue heather <laughs> and i make it less private you less in personal you, yes you do you um, do and you um, do such wonderful work in this area and it's such an important area to be aware of in our lives because yes. the mind-body connection we know is so integral, mm. but the mind and gut health mm. is mm. essential. And I haven't known this all my mm. life. I've only really known it the last 10 years. Yep. Yep. And I just, uh, it, it, today is really, mm. A significant day it's amazing because of all the days we chose to speak about this yes. topic today is bowel awareness or well, this week is bowel awareness week yes so it's a really relevant topic for this week mm -hmm. uh, hi William thanks for letting us know you're here who mm -hmm. else is here and let us know in the comments uh, what you think of first up when we talk about detoxing the mind, what words come to you straight off? Just the first word or the first phrase when I say, we're gonna talk about detoxing the mind today. And then another question is, how does the mind and mind health and gut health come together, all right? I'd love to hear your comments on those two questions. So just think about that as I'm introducing more of Debbie. Mm. So Debbie works here in Kiama and in Wollongong mm. as a colon hydrotherapy specialist. And I'm just gonna ask you, how did you start off in this industry? It's, a, it's an unknown area of health relatively compared to most others. Yes. How did you start off? Well, thank you, Heather. Um, I started in the colon hydrotherapy um, industry, so to speak, about 17 years ago, mm -hmm. and that was up in Sydney. I was asked, it was a bit by a default. I never thought about this working space for my life to go into, but I was um, heading overseas about, oh, 18, 19 years ago, and a f I thought, oh, I need a bit more cash. And a friend of mine said, oh, look, I'm doing some rece reception work at a colonic hydrotherapy clinics in Sydney. Mm -hmm. There's a reception job opened on the weekends in Ramwick. And I thought, oh, okay, I can do that. I've had nutrition and massage backgrounds, so right. I did work in the uh, natural health. Mm -hmm. But my main background was social worker so I have a, lo a big love for community and people yes so yeah. um yes and once you have that 
branding, so to speak. Yeah. And I did that for about 25 years in the Illawarra the area. Work. Yeah, area. area. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know, just connecting with people. And this yeah. was next level because I started getting out of social work and I went into the natural health field. Right. So I was brought into the colonic hydrotherapy industry through taking on that job on the weekend to get more money to okay. go overseas. Yes. Yeah. And I knew a little bit about colonic hydro, uh, hydrotherapy. As you said, it's um, not talked about. It, it's not a, wasn't then especially a big area that yep. everybody was looking into. And um, so I did my little couple of months stint there and then came, did my travels, come back and I thought, I really loved that. Yes. I really yeah. loved how people were walking out, feeling so much better, yeah. so much more confident in getting some health and life back again into yes. themselves and yeah. detoxing themselves, yes. you know. So it sounds like you with your integrated social work as a background mm, mm. and being part of community and mm. then realising through this story that you just shared, mm. how, you know, how you can get gut health and the, the importance of that uh, into people's lives. Yes. You developed your passion incidentally yes. like that and yes. then you made a decision to work on your passion. That's right. Can yes. I just ask people, <laughs> how many of you actually are living your passion like Debbie has talked about she went into that passion when she discovered this how many who just uh, put yes in the comments section if you are living your passion it doesn't necessarily have to be work it might be your you know you're retired you're spending time with grandchildren that is your passion for this season but what are you living your passion because that's what came out as you were sharing yes yeah. yes and I've carried that passion through because as mm. you said, it was, it's a bit of a taboo area. And mm. I have to share a funny story. When yes. you get invited out to dinner or a barbecue <laughs> and they say, what do you do? And I go, colonic hydrotherapy. <laughs> and they'll go, oh, no, no. And after a few <laughs> wines, it opens up and the whole story is about my working background. <laughs> so just a little funny area there. Cause it, yes, it, my job doesn't go down well either. <laughs> I'm a marriage counsellor, you know, and then right. husbands and wives look at each other straight away. Oh, yes, yes, beware. <laughs> She's going to be looking beware. at us. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yes, so... Um, after that, 17 years ago, I got a diploma in colonic hydrotherapy. As I said, I've got a background in uh, yes. counselling and social mm. work and mm. community development. So I worked for in Sydney for about six years. Yes. And then I saw the need in the Illawarra. And plus right. I was driving backwards and forwards. Yes. And then I think... Oh, our lives just get those signals coming yes. of what we yeah. need to do. And if you've got that catching power to catch those signals, yes. you can really walk the mile a bit it's easier. Sure. Yes, you know? absolutely. I've always said you have two, two parts of the road. The fork in the road where it might go up a bit hilly, yes. Yes. or you can go around catching power and move on much more healthier and... Um, easier for your oh, lives yes so oh. then i opened up my own business in yes. Wollongong 10 yeah. 11 years ago okay yes. fantastic yes. okay yes. and you spoke about the mind you know the mind gut connection mm. and mm. this brings us to meditation mm. you might not think so but it's about connecting within ourselves. Mm. can mm. you tell us a bit about mm. that mm. Well, this is where I get with um, the colonic hydrotherapy and it, research has just opened up into gut health, mm. um, especially the last five or six years. There's been so many mm. podcasts on yeah. gut health. Mm. And as I've experienced this and being a, a meditator on and off since the 70s, really, mm -hmm. but I've, I've followed the practices of some people might have heard of the Brahma Kumaris, we're a worldwide organisation, but we have a lot of meditation centres around Australia. And I coordinate the centre in the Illawarra. And we have a retreat centre in William, Wilton, which isn't too far yeah. away. So I um, 
have been practicing a form of this open eye meditation mm. because we're not walking out in the big world with our eyes closed. Mm. So mm. we have to have that practice through the third eye connecting mm. within ourselves of our own peaceful energy mm -hmm. to be able to walk out in that community, yes. which is coming at us all the time, you know. Yes. So how I connect that mind and gut health is through um, having a balanced thoughts yes and a balanced yeah. mind and Being a practice conscious of your internal world that's right yeah. and we have the main vagus nervous system it runs from the brain to the gut and it's a communicator the whole body communicates so we hear those words gut instinct gut feeling mm -hmm. it's the center mm -hmm. solar plex energy point our mm -hmm. gut so we have this communication going on to brain, our mind and our gut. And our mind can be very overactive. We overthink. Yep. And guess mm. where it all goes? To the gut. Mm. We have those feelings when we're stressed that we are, um, it goes to our gut. Yes. You know, we get the stress in our shoulder, the neck, but a lot of it is going into our gut. Yes. And because the, yeah. the bowel, the large intestine, the colon, it's two meters long. So we have a very, um, uh, we store a lot in our gut, you know. Because of the overthinking. The, and the overthinking stress. and the stress through can the I... main vagus nervous yes. system. So, can I, even though we haven't, may not have heard of the vagus nerve system, can I ask the group? Just put yes in the comment section if you find that you do overthink, okay? I'd put my hand up. With that, definitely. <laughs> okay. So put in yes if you do think you overthink. If you don't think you overthink, put a no. And then the next question, <coughs> pardon me, I'd like to ask is, if you do overthink, what strategies have you found helpful? Okay. What strategies have you found helpful to prevent that? And what I'm going to do just now is just before we move on, is just look at some of these responses okay so we've got margaret saying you're sure aware of gut health if you're an old nurse oh, like me congratulations <laughs> good on you margaret <laughs> drinking warm water while eating slowly mm. along with a well-balanced high veggie lentil diet mm. well done and annie's saying yes who else of you um find that you overthink debbie and i have said we both do so just yeah. put that in the in the comments section and we'll move on to how the gut can help us mm. to stop mm. that overthinking. Okay, so we've heard a bit about the colonic hydrotherapy. It is, I'll give you a bit of a process of this. I have a colon hydrotherapy machine which um, connects to the uh, bowel area. So water's going in, water's coming out and it picks up all the fecal matter. Now, as I said, the colon's two meters long, so we have pockets for that two meters, and they're about three fingers wide. So that's where everything gets caught in there. So what we're doing is, and also our gut is the gut microbiome, it's the gut bacteria, and we have bacteria all through our body, but that's the main area. 65% of our bacteria is in the gut, the gut mm. microbiome, so it's, collecting all that in the bowel area of those pockets. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is we're reprogramming the gut bacteria. So right. I go back again to the main vagus nervous system, the mind-gut connection, mm -hmm. and um, we're helping the mind reprogram as well. So the gut is detoxing. So then the mind is detoxing. And that, mm. you've heard foggy brain, decision yes. makings are not going too well. And all I can say is that experience I've had over 17 years and being aware of the mind yeah. is that you can see the mind reprogramming as well as well, the gut. Yes. Ah. <laughs> so it's that, that essential connection with our mind that when we do the body stuff, it helps the mind. Yes. When we do the mind stuff, we need to be aware of mm. how much that is connected with the body. How much stress can there. go to the gut as well. Yes. And so with meditation, toxin. how have you mm. found mm. that to be 
useful in decluttering mm. the mind, mm. detoxing the mind. Mm. Mm. It's a practice. Yeah. We can't do meditation all in like a few weeks. Mm. It's a lovely kickstart, but we have to have a daily practice, yes. most definitely. Like a habit. Yes. I've been focusing on developing healthy habits. Ha healthy oh, habits. Uh, last session and the next yep. two will be focusing Fantastic. on that. Yes, so yes. how can we get meditation to mm. be part of our daily habit so that it mm. sticks as a habit mm. and mm. becomes part of our life mm. like cleaning our teeth? Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody... I say we have this title, a teacher of meditation. I don't yeah. see it as a teacher. I see it now as a sharer. We yeah. have these young people now talking about their influence. Yes. You know, mm. there's this word changing, which I'm yes. love, I'm yes. love hearing these younger yes. people speaking these it's days. It's great, it's great. So yeah. I don't say that I'm a teacher of meditation, I share, and it's the experience that mm. people pick up. Mm. And it is a very individual thing, but it's definitely the practice. If you start off, if I tell you a practice that I love, is I set my clock to about an hour and just have a minute stop i can't tell you how Excellent. powerful that is yes. and on our brahma kumari's um meditation site our website we have jam just a minute and ah. that was created in london because we're a yes. worldwide organization <coughs> it was created mm. in london so jam and you can put it on your phone right so every hour that will come up and you yes. just stop and I can't tell That's, you how powerful that mm, minute is. I love that, And it's that, like Debbie. one of our senior mm. teachers who is coordinator of our Lura Retreat Centre, she's an ex-school teacher yes. and she's in her 80s. And she said when she was a school teacher and she was teaching high school, so teenage boys, right. and if they were fighting, yes. she wouldn't be yelling and screaming. She'd say, stop. Take a minute. And then she'd go, carry on. And they couldn't carry on. No, that's because right. It because the, the whole energy. mind, that's right. <laughs> Fancy <laughs> doing that to teenage and, boys. Yes, you and know, it's so a great technique for parenting as well. Just a minute isn't it? is yes. very, very powerful. So you know, with the brain gut, can, can, that's how you do it. I, I love that because I know there's a lot of people viewing who are, you know, our age group. Yep. Yep. And there's a lot of young ones as well, actually. A dear friend of Melinda's was saying she couldn't wait for the topic today. So she'll yeah, be looking yeah. at that outside of work time. Mm. But um, so, you know, all generations will be listening to this. But I, I'm thinking of uh, our, in our age space uh, mm. with hot flushes. What I have found, mm. the beauty of that, I take many minutes because I would have an average of three hot flushes in an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Mm. if it's in the evening... I will take, for me it's like two minutes, mm. I'll take two minutes out on the balcony in the cold air yeah. and just meditate out there. Yes. If it's in the daytime, mm. I'll put the fan on and I will do some yoga mm. as just one move or two mm. moves mm -hmm. while I'm cooling down mm. in front of the fan. Mm -hmm. If I'm absolutely desperate, mm. I'll open the freezer door yeah. and stand in there. Yeah. But I have these minutes yes. that actually enable me to meditate then yes. and yes. be still. And shifts the energy. Yes. It's yeah. so powerful energy. <laughs> yes. And that's what meditation is. It's energy, mm. you know. So you can be yeah. as creative as you like with it. It's not this one structure fits all. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, who would have thought that I would have ended up meditating inside our freezer? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love your creativity. That's very good. <laughs> so with the uh, another uh, response from William, 20 years ago had gut issues and the doctor could not find anything wrong. He asked me if I had any idea. I told him it's emotionally and he more or less said, I'm silly. I knew what it was. You know, yeah. William, I hear this, as I said, 17 years, I hear this coming through mm. and they put it under this word, irritable bowel syndrome. Now, 
we know it's irritable, yeah. but what is it? And as I said in the start, yeah. it's all research, but it is c moving ahead. They're seeing Alzheimer's, Parkinson, ADHD, autism, yeah. mental health, anxiety, depression, autoimmune diseases is all coming from the gut. Because yes. we eat, we digest, it comes through, last chance. Yes. So toxic buildup causing inflammation, irritating the gut lining. So I really love that question, William, because yes. I have had that question for 17 years, and it's only really been Helen in the la Heather in the last oh seven years that we're actually saying doctors are saying to their patients, yeah. if you feel you'd like to have a colonic hydrotherapy session, yes. please do. Yes. But they won't say, here, I'm referring you, because it's only still research, yes. you know? Yeah. They, they've got to wait till it comes out in all the yeah, medical the health whole, journals Yes, which and takes everything. decades. And it takes time. But the important thing is, is mm. that the doctors are being re-informed. Yes. I, I, and it, it yes. has taken a long time, but yeah. this holistic side of medicine yes, is Yes, it's so coming awesome. through. And yeah. it, it comes through slowly. It yes. really does. Yeah. But it, it, it is um, coming through now. But yeah. that irritable bowel syndrome, you know, it's just an umbrella word. And I would suggest that people look into further. Yes, because it's that. so... Yeah. Would you say it's 90%? connected with stress or even a hundred percent. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Mm. And sometimes things cannot be answered, you know. Yeah. We have to play around with, well, not mm. use the word play around, but we have to experiment. go on that journey, experiment yeah. with it, yes. you know. Yeah, yeah, my word. And it's a good experience if you've got that focus, your brain's not overly toxic and foggy, yes. you know. Yeah. And you get that clarity and you've yes. got, I'll go back to that word again, that catching power. To catch those that energy coming to you, yes. which is where meditation has taken me, yes. is having that catching power and the power of the mind yes. to um, get me through those yeah. forks in the road. Which yes. road am I going to take? Yes. Oh. To automatically within that one minute, yep. to one take minute. a different mm. road, to take yes. a different yes. space. And um, yeah. I know I say with my clients who have gotten, who are saying things that they don't want to be saying that they'll regret later, that I have read stop signs up yeah. to, uh, you know, a little an actual yeah. stop sign yeah. Yeah. that I've only yeah. had to use a few times with clients in the session, but I encourage them to use that, to have their stop signs at home, yeah. whatever way, let's stop. And that signal yeah. to reset after a moment of quietness, stillness, deep breathing, and yeah. then acknowledging, yeah. where, what's a different pathway here? Or what's going on inside, inside me, me to cause me to react this way? Well, we can way. have a little few minutes sharing that experience. I think so. Create. Yes, because yeah. it's community yeah. connecting our inner yeah. and outer world. So yeah. let's take yeah. those few minutes yeah. to experience And it's that. also this week, as well as um, Bowel Awareness Week, it's also on the 4th of June... Um, environmental world environmental day so yeah. maybe we can have some beautiful thoughts for our planet as well yes and everything that's happening yes as the larger community that we're in yes so it's like this contagious care when mm. we are caring for our own inner world that's right we're able to give so much more mm. to our outer world that mm. whether it be in relationships with others whether it be with the environment, at what capacity can we look to nature and yes. see what we can do to bring this and we to are be a connected. Place. We have the yeah. five elements in us: fire, earth, air, water, and the ether that we send all those lovely energy of ourselves out. Lovely. Yes. yes. Well, let's okay. look at a meditation now. That's I'm just going to do a nice little commentary, and I'll just play a little bit of music for us. So just sit relaxing in a nice position just for a couple of minutes as I sit here together even though we're not in the same room we are in the same energy 
for the past 30 minutes we have shared together. So relaxing, sitting, starting off with our feet. We scan our body, moving up from the feet to the knees, sending our knees love. They work hard for us. Moving through our body to our thighs, our hips, sending that love. Moving into our center solar plex energy, our gut and our lower organs. Sending love. I now move the energy up to my heart. the love of my soul I empower my soul through the love in my heart I now move up to my throat chakra my communication to the world, my communication to myself. And I bring that love and respect from the throat chakra. I now move to the third eye, the centre of my forehead, where the energy of enlightenment empowers me to walk my path, to walk my truth and respect others to do the same, to be as one in this community. And now I move to the head chakra, the energy that flows, the higher energy in and out of my body. So I do have that catching power of the positivity of the spiritual and the highest of energies for my soul in this body to be peace within this world that challenges us but loves us and helps us on our journey. Om Shanti. Thank you, oh, Heather. That ah, was that was beautiful. Delicious, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. Beautiful to just take mm. a minute. A few minutes, yes. yes. Yeah. Take a minute. Mm. It was lovely to just know how easy it is to focus on different aspects and move up to empower mm. the love in our heart that we do have mm. for, for mm. ourselves and others. Mm. And I wonder if you as a group would like to just put in the comment section before you go what particularly resonated for you today or what did you get out of that beautiful meditation that Debbie has just led us through either one of those 
it would be a gift to Debbie, I know, and to mm -hmm. myself to hear from you on what resonated for you. What was the most meaningful part of Debbie's, uh, this interview with Debbie? And uh, what did you particularly get out of that beautiful meditation? Margaret saying thanks for the excellent info mm -hmm. balanced session. Thank you so much, Margaret. So can I encourage you on the replays as well? We don't know you're here otherwise. So if you can just uh, click on the comments and do hashtag replay and then share with Debbie so that she, can, she will go back and respond to this as I will too, um, to respond to your comments. And so please just take half a, half a minute to just jot a comment down on what resonated for you or what was particularly meaningful for you out of that meditation. Mm. So thank you again, thank Debbie. Thank you for the it's invite. Been, it's been a privilege having you here. Yes, thank you. And uh, I look forward to, uh, in a fortnight's time, the third Tuesday of June, I'll be uh, looking at how we can get rid of bad habits. We looked at how to develop really healthy habits last session, and we've got that in place. We need to get rid of the bad habits, which really connects with what we're talking it about does. today. Yes. To be able to have so much room, all the room we want, to be able to fill those good habits into our mm. precious healthy jar. Mm. So have a great day, everyone. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.